Okay, Chris. We have your revised section up on the screen. Is this on? Yeah. The introduction um, was largely uh, edited by Andreas. Um, I think focused more on dose addition, independent action as concepts. Is that right, Andreas? In That's that third right, that concept, yeah. In the third paragraph. Mm -hmm. A little below that. Help if I highlight it, but. So I guess, you know, the point is that there's evidence of dose addition using animal studies um, and then the discussion of uh, just the concept of dose addition and that to incorporate that into a, a cumulative risk assessment, we chose to use the hazard index. Um, and below that paragraph that's there at the bottom of that page, Andreas wrote a paragraph describing kind of alternatives. Do you want to jump in, Andreas, about that? Sort of why we chose... Oh. There are equations there that haven't popped up for some reason. So where this gap is, uh, Chris has... <laughs> oh, I know, because it's in... There were the formula. There we are. So now it is, we now understand what the hazard index approach is. Oh yes, and if you now scroll down, the HI offers flexibility. That's a paragraph I included because um, having said earlier that there are other risk assessment approaches based on dose addition, uh, we felt that we need to say why why we um, focused on the hazard index approach and not on any of the others. And that's basically what this paragraph says. Oh. Should I go on, or you guys want to read more about that? So it is true that the, um, so the point of the paragraph is saying that, you know, you can use different uncertainty values. It is true in the case one, um, coming from the Court and Camp and Faust paper, we use different uh, uncertainty factors as described by them for various reasons. Um, but in the other two cases, we chose an uncertainty factor of 100. Um, but I think the point is still a good one that, you know, we have the one case that has the different differing um, quality evaluations of the studies. Um, the next paragraph is the three, beginning the three different sources for the um, RFDs. It's um, a little bit more enhanced of what was there before. The, introducing the, um, the three different cases.
the explanation at the end of the, the last sentence, we considered multiple cases to determine the sensitivity of the results to the assumptions for RFDs and the total impact on the hazard index approach. Like it's introducing the next one that actually is referring to the thing that just completed. Okay. I mean, we can change that. It's it's like that later on. This this was just yeah, but I know structurally here it doesn't make any right. And then case two from I started looking at case one. I said no, this is case two. Okay. By simple logic. So wait a minute. Let me repeat that for everyone. I think that the yes. case one at the end, or case two at the end, or case three at the end of the discussion should be removed to the front of the discussion to make it clear for anyone reading it that case one refers to we, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, okay, how do we do this, Mike? Do you want me to make the edits and send it to you, or what do you want to do? Yeah, what exactly? So where it starts there with these. Second sentence. Case yes. one. Just put down case one. Includes published values, right? Case two includes values derived from <coughs> recently. Right. <coughs> and then see where it says case one, three lines down, get rid of that. Sorry. Things not working. Right, but yeah, right there. And it would be On case three. From the de novo. <clears throat> okay. okay. And Okay. Three. Then the next two paragraphs are, are trying to focus more on uh, Biomonitoring uh, offers, you know, measurements of actual mixtures of exposures, and then they're going to be incorporated, you know, into this hazard index. So the to estimate daily intakes paragraph. Why does that look so different? I'm having a hard time seeing. We actually have a a paragraph break. Well, the the breaks got lost for some reason, but to estimate. And then the chat below that, five or six lines down, is another break. I think okay. just for emphasis. Okay. So that to estimate paragraph is, is trying to say about biomonitoring data offers measures of mixtures of values per person. Can I suggest this um, paragraph where you just are, where the cursor is? 
the King Chap has used a novel by calculating it for each individual, mm -hmm. not per individual. That's a good point. No, no, no. Other, up, up, up. Few words to the right. Go on. Oh, oh, oh. By cal yeah, by calculating it, and now delete the per, and say instead for each. And then same in the parentheses too. Do you want to change that in our case for each pregnant woman and infant? That's largely for emphasis. I mean, this is in contrast to the standard hazard index method of using population percentiles from exposure studies on a per chemical basis. Yes. And then the, there's a paragraph break then, we apply data. That should be, break the reapplied should be can't find it. Just above where the cursor is, Mike. Oh. <laughs> that should be the paragraph break there. Okay, so that's largely just setting up. I, I, I hope that was in response to what you guys were saying earlier. Yeah, perfect. Um, then, um, sorry I didn't put it in. So then we, we emphasized it a little bit more. Uh, if you scroll down a little bit more, where the cases are specifically s described. It's funny that the page, there's yeah, a lot of care of breaks. Everybody's there. Uh, section was a little bit different. Okay. So this was meant to expand a little bit what was there, a motivating sentence beginning each case description and then the details. And then I believe the only other change was in the conclusion section. Which we didn't Paragraphs, but um, trying to point out that things were similar across the different cases repeatedly. Paragraph there, yes. We're open for suggestions if you want to make that stronger somehow.
but it's largely just a description of what we found. It's not a conclusion about you know, what, what it means. So I think that should be later in the report. This is just based on the numbers. Yes, that's a good idea. Then the other, the only other change I think that we made um, is in table two there, pages down. So this is, if you look in the second column, the range, the range of the points of departures. So this is using the three different cases, uh, and so we changed it. Before it was a parenthesis number comma second number uh, parenthesis. And this we thought maybe the dash made it look more like a range. The second column. So that's those were the changes. Table has generally averages. But is that based upon this? I'm sorry, what's your question? It's the this is based on the median intake. From from uh, <coughs> the biomonitoring data. Yeah. All right. But that summary table that we have. Did you extract some of the information from here? Uh, the summary, the table I have with the, uh, yeah, it's, um, I, I think it's the based on the same information. I mean, it's the information Chris sent for Serge's report. Right, the comparisons. Yeah. Yeah, right. it's, well, she, Chris gave us median, and upper bound exposures for each phthalate. Right. And what I want to look at here, consistency. Not open, please. Well, these are these are points of departure. Second I mean, excuse the me. The second these column, are... column is the real column. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. What we, that's the real one, right? Yeah. Now, which is that what in Haynes? In Haynes. If I look at NHANES and I look at adult female for DEP, all right, average is 5.34. Find that there? I don't do DEP here. This was just for the six that were included in this analysis. All right, give me um, <sighs> DHP and HANES. 3.62. So this is, is that truncated or? Yeah, I, I mean, these numbers, there's no point in putting a lot of significant digits. Yeah, but I don't, I want to, not looking at consist, I'm looking for consistency in the report. That's all. I understand what you're doing, but I want to make sure that A and B cohere, have coherence. Yeah. Right now, I have 3.62 and you have 3. That doesn't work. I have three significant digits, you have one. And for DINP, di what do you have? And I got point. Nine two. Nine two point nine two. 
Are we looking at apples and apples or apples and maybe? Now, what are you giving us? Medians? I'm giving you average. Well, it's not the it's, same. It's the median. The average, this is, the average here is the well, median? Uh, in my table, I put the average is the median, yeah. All right, well, let's make that clear. Yeah. But there's still a difference. The numbers don't match up totally. They match up. They're within the margin of error, but <laughs> they're not. They should be exactly the same in this case. There should be no ambiguity. Where's, where's DIB? Yeah. Point two. Point 0.2. Getting close, point 0.18. We're closing in. DBP. Point six. Point six one. Now that's close. DEP. Okay. All right. So we have we have some within a percent, and we have some within fifty percent. How about BBP? All right. Hold on a second. Look at BBP. We don't have that here. I have DNOP. No, wait, 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 no, I, how about DIDP? I have 1.26, so we're a little bit off, so they have to be changed, they have to be checked, all right? For adult women, right? This is adult women, we're okay. So, see, part of the problem is, in the middle of all of this, we switched from unweighted to weighted. And I, I'm not quite sure if this is a table of the weighted or the unweighted. I mean, that could explain different numbers. I, I agree it needs to be consistent, but... Um, all right, well, we have to check it. All right, if, if it's weighted versus unweighted, we just have to say that. The differences are not going to make a... Di they are not going to substantially change any conclusions but we do want to be able to be sure that we have something that people, when they look at table A and table P, don't scratch their heads. Right. We just don't want that issue to arise. Because in the end, they're essentially the same. I see another thing. What I put in my table was the NHANES women, and this table is the pregnant women. So that's why there are small differences. That's where the disagreement is. Oh, okay. Well, then we have to. Then we just to say that. We yeah, say, yeah, yeah. These are these are issues. Well, these this table is pregnant women. My table has all women. Has all, is all women, and you know it was. All right. Well, as as long as we're able to explain it, yeah. and do it clearly. So it's Mike's fault. Yeah, it <laughs> is. It's his fault. It's not. It's it's it can't it can't be Chris's fault. It's not her fault. Well, no, it's not Chris's fault. It's 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 mm -hmm. because I did it. It's your last fault. Last night, be you didn't do it last night. Just before night. I went home. Uh, you were rushing out for Valentine's Day, so yeah. therefore, you're allowed to have an excuse. But okay. Mike, we need to. That's not in that table legend. So no, I was right. We have to get these things yeah. clearly identified. It needs to be specified. I think that's but the whole issue here. Type in here that the, well. In this one, we just have all women, but the other one we have to put down pregnant women. Or pregnant women. Or pregnant women. Paul. Yes, sir. This is, this is, this is data based from my chapter. I will, I will double check that. Okay. I will double check it in the tables I have, and okay. I will double check yeah. that. I, I'm we not concerned. I'm just not concerned, but I just want to make sure yeah. that we have all our I's dotted and T's crossed. But I do think in this table, it would be not a good thing to have too many digits there. I think they need to agree for rounding. Yeah. But but I don't think we need to put four digits on that via monitoring. You know, yeah, and I also had a problem. The only problem which I really was going to bring in off line in the comparisons table is that there's no way we can have four significant, you know, 34.23, give me a break. Hi, where are you? I'm back at the comparison table. Oh. I mean, we, have, we have numbers that go out like 1114, and we have ones that come out 43.02. So 
So, but in Not this quite that, in this that case, accurate. though, well, do you, you know, are you guys then who? He's looking at something. We're not looking. At uh, I, I'm uh, looking at the old. I'll hand I'm it. looking at the comparison I have tables. To hand out. Um, All right. it, it was just uh, uh, in haste. Don't 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 have to. Don't, yeah. So in this don't, case, don't though, beat yourself up. Does it bother you to have the margin of exposure values with that many digits? It does me, but I don't know how else to represent it. Well, I think there are a little bit too many. I think there's way too many, but when we tried to round them before, people complained about that. So I'm not quite sure where you guys sit on it. I don't really like having that many. I usually like three or less, depending upon how much. So look at the range values when you say three or less. <laughs> do we want to change it to three digits and then zeros? Yeah. And what you would do is three digits, and they go ten to the x. But but you have to keep perspective on being, yeah. on avoiding to be over accurate. Three digits is is a little crazy, I think. Yeah, but if you had three no, digits on the, on the, times on the margin ten, of exposures. Look, look so at the oh, I see. Should so that be okay, thirty-two point eight? Or if, if we put thirty-two thousand, thirty-three thousand. If we do one hundred and sixty-six times ten to the two, and then you know. We did it by putting the, the zeros into a um, some kind of um, less obvious format. So a margin of exposure in hundred in thousands. Yes, or something. in thousands or in hundreds so of like thousands. Like twenty-five to six hundred and twenty-five, eight to eighty-three. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it makes things a little bit less cumbersome to explain. We're not providing the results of an election here. We're briefing a relative I know, range I, of information. But there was just pushback when I rounded before. I don't know. I didn't know where the what the committee thought of that. Yeah. Okay. Do we round it to thousands? Yeah, thousands. I think is perfectly logical. In that way, we protect ourselves from criticism, but at the same time, we are providing information that's meaningful. Okay, so Mike, do you want me to, how do we want to do that? Do you want me to go well, ahead and create the table? I can do that offline. Okay, okay. But again, let's, 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 let's look at this. What we're doing here is we're basically number smithing. It's not yeah. changing our overall values, it's the, the overall conclusions, our overall level of certainty or uncertainty. It's just trying to come up with a way of presenting this stuff so it's consistent and allows the reader to understand the thought processes. Okay. Maybe put it another way, Chris. We have so many uncertainties, therefore, we have a certain level of certainty. And to us, I think the level of thousands is reasonable. Going beyond that in terms of digits doesn't make any common sense. Or even 10,000. <laughs> well, yeah, thousands. but what I'm, I'm saying is at least it gives us a boundary from which to operate, or boundary within which we can operate. And what we haven't said here, and maybe we should add something, I don't think it's here, is what we think an extreme value of a margin of exposure is. Is a thousand the, the value that we would be if it's in? Yeah, but what you do is you put it up in, in thousands and just leave the number of 25, 80. Okay, okay, yeah. Put the yeah. word margin, bio intake in thousands. Why? It's the same thing in thousands.
Just saying the units are in thousands instead of. Yeah. Pay for you. My feeling is that we are more used to. With all those zeros, it drives you a little nuts. Well, it's. Uh, well, if it's zeros, it's zeros. But it's not zeros. It's in the levels of uncertainty. That's why thousands gives us a degree of comfort with what we think the data means. If we start putting more, if we start putting other, if we start putting all the zeros out in there, we're not sure what that means. Why are we doing it? Can, can we not say round it to the next thousand? Isn't that what we're saying? Yeah, but say it like that in the table, up there. I think you and I are saying the same thing. Well, we can put a footnote. Yeah, yeah of course we are, always. <laughs> Just yours the English bent and mine's the Americanized, Northeastern Americanized. <laughs> Let's have a look how it looks like. Okay. I'm not sure what your concern is, Hulk. That's all, because it, 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 we have levels of uncertainty, and we have to at least acknowledge that. It's not the level of uncertainty, it's, it's putting in factors. If the hazard index, and now we have margins of safety, which is not 1,000, but 1,000, 1, I would prefer to see the real numbers. And uh, I, in, with margins of exposure, I am used to looking at it at real numbers and not 1K, 2K, 3K. Well, okay, the other, the, the in-between option then would be to leave the numbers the way they are and put a footnote and say, these are based on calculated values. We don't, we don't, you know, interpretation of, I wouldn't do of that. all the numbers is not, is not implied or something. Then you open <laughs> yourself up to more and more and more explanation. Let's, let's I, I just don't think it's well, worth honestly, it. Honestly, brothers and sisters, why are we discussing this right now? This is a really yeah. trivial issue. That's why I think. Just yes. make it thousands and leave it at that. Period. So how, one, how do you want to have the numbers written there? How do you want to have them there? Just in thousands? Yeah. Okay. One. Just, yeah. But you leave it there as... 10,000, 5,000, okay. Whatever floats your boat right now, because I think Andreas is right. Let's move on. Okay. So we're we don't know what we're doing right well now. right now they're arranging to have surge call in well we can do that too <laughs> if we do we have any deck chairs okay surge is gonna call in great yeah 
Well, what are the critical issues that we have about his report? What, you, you seem to have a bit of angst, Holger. I just wanted to make sure that uh, all the basic data is checked and double checked, that we are not missing a digit and that we are not in the wrong ballpark. But I've, I'm confident that uh, both you and Mike have gone through the data. And not only us as staff. Yeah. I mean, well, yeah. Kent. Kent, Kent and Leslie have, have done both. A, a lot. Yeah. And have they, have they checked our stuff too? You mean the biomonitoring stuff? I, I know they they've looked at everything. I don't know how yeah. much effort they my, put into that. My concern is when things like this come up, discrepancies, there have been so many versions of this and that, and we've changed yeah. this and that. You know, I've done my very best to try to make sure that we're looking at the most recent version, but when we're pulling things from old tables and things, it's... Yeah, it's, um, yeah I mean, mm -hmm. that's it's a challenge, but we'll uh, just keep Oh, keep aware of these things like that table this table. I mean, it's I Guess once it's in the report we could always go back and it's try easy to, ver to verify it and reconcile like these so we'll things. Yeah. That step. Yeah. Yeah. But Yeah, it's hard to look at a number and say oh, that's the right number. I can't do that. Anymore. Well the, the key problem we were having before was Wait till she's done The key problem we were having before, Chris, was the fact that there were so many numbers in the, in, in the Versar report. We had to sit down and go over it. Thank you. Where we thought there were issues, and also the data uncertainties, because I just told you some of the data was really, really old, and we didn't think it'd be appropriate. And that's why we changed. That's why some of the Thank we didn't change the numbers. That's why the calculations right away, were done. Yeah. For newer yes. data sets, so in the comparison, uh, that's the newer table, data sets. We have the Versa data set, and then we have a CPSC data set. So the CPSC data set is the one you adapted in the last round. Yes, okay. yes. Okay, so this is the it's it's new. The corrected or modified it's Versa the, report. The, yeah, modified. modified version. And that came out of the last meeting when Paul was up here. Waiting for surge, I guess. We finished yeah. your section, Chris? Yeah, okay. I think we finished. Okay. Yes. Well, we want to, to move on to your section, Paul. And no, I don't think he's put in the changes yet. You haven't put in the changes yet, have you? No, no, no. unfortunately. Okay. So we might have to wait for that tomorrow. What about talking about the our data and where we are waiting for surge oh yeah well he'll be I just sent him the number he should call in and uh, in a minute or two I mean it's it's a big report mm -hmm. yeah took a while to wade through it it well Well, Holger, how much time do you think you need to go over all that data? I would think it's it's a couple of days just not to read it, but also to digest it and to have the feeling that, that uh, safe with the data that's has been presented here and that it has just been presented a couple of let's say days ago to us yeah. mm -hmm. I want to make sure that the data settles I 
as Paul said, it's an enormous data set. It is, and and also we're trying as we're trying to, uh, you know, do the new work. Um, at the same time as going back over that. And as you can see, uh, <clears throat> looking at the original bursar report and the modifications, there can be some differences that arise. There are, there are, yeah. But in terms of, of bottom line, the conclusions, Paul, that you reach in your section, Holger going, spending two days looking at the data. It's not going to change. Not going to change. No. But again, remember, all these numbers are based upon the fact that this is the available data set we have. Mm -hmm. And so therefore there are uncertainties, and those uncertainties we carried through through everything. Yeah. And if anyone wants to make a beef about it, well, then give us some more data. And we'll be happy to improve it. It's a data-hungry process, and it can be easily, easily fixed with better exposure data, yep. real data. You know, the factors themselves, they won't change. Exposure factors are re more meaningful. The best we have. The best EPA can offer. But still, it's, it's I think, this time now, or the first time that we discuss all the, let's say, interpretations of the final data, the first time that we discuss the contribution of the different routes of exposure, the significance for our approach, and so on. So I think I need to be some, need some time to digest the information we, we are mm -hmm. or have been presented. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, there's so I much, uh, you know, it, it, it's hard to keep up with it. Mm -hmm. We're going to go through it today, at least on the top level. Well, yeah, uh, we're expecting Serge to call in in a couple of minutes. Um, I, hi, this is Serge. Can, can you all hear me? Oh, yes. Hi. Hi. Thank you for joining us. Hi, uh, no problem. Ooh. He's got the question. Okay. Were there any general questions before you go through the data? I would like an overview. If somebody could just present the overview of what's here, because like we say, there's so much, but can we just start with? Okay, Serge, could you give her an overview of what's in the report? Um, Let's give Chris, give Chris an overview of this what's- This tab eight. Okay, let me, let me pull up the document at, at my end. Please just give me a few minutes. Sure. Yes, it's tab eight, Chris. <laughs> you can tell it's the big one. Yeah. It's the big one. And how, it, how it's modified from the last version, Serge? Yes. You had an initial draft, and now we have a, a new improved draft. Okay. Okay, um, I'm just opening it up at my end, so it should be up shortly. Okay. Um, I guess um, there were a few things that, that we modified in this round uh, when compared to, to the draft report, and I can you know kind of go through that quickly. Um, we made some changes to uh, some of the, the exposure equations, specifically the mouthing equations as it relates to infants and toddlers. Um, there were some um, inconsistencies in the concentrations, and uh, we redid the, the calculations for that. Um, and that affected uh, you know, the charts and, and the pie charts and the, and, and the tables and the graphs. Um, and we also provided some additional information in the, you know, in the write-up of some of our assumptions as it 
relates to how you know the data were compiled uh, mainly for phthalate concentrations. Uh, and these had to do mainly with some of the assumptions that we used to calculate the, the means in the 95th percentiles. Um, and, and, and the last thing that we did was we, we uh, created a table which compared uh, the aggregate daily uh, exposures for the eight phthalates with some of the other uh, direct and indirect uh, methods, the indirect methods, of course, being uh, Wormuth and, and Clark. Uh, these are some of the the, the, the main changes, and, and I can uh, um, go through the, the general format of, of the report. Um, sh should I should I do that right now? Well, why don't you start with what the executive summary deals with, and okay. then, then right. go backwards from there. I think that's where Chris is heading, right? You want to know what, what it means, Chris? Sure. Start with the executive summary. Okay. And summarize the executive summary. Okay. Um, in general, what, what we did was we, we calculated um, uh, the daily exposures for each of the eight phthalates across various products and exposure routes. And, and having done that, what we decided to do was we, we decided to reclassify these daily aggregated exposures based on specific product categories. Uh, these categories were, were suggested by CPSC. Uh, some of them fell under the CPSC juri jurisdictions and others did not. So we wanted to create a table which kind of showed which ones fell under the categories and which did not. And we wanted to provide percentage estimates. That is, uh, which product has, you know, contributes what percentage of the daily uh, phthalate exposure to a particular subpopulation. And remember, we were dealing with four main subpopulations that included uh, pregnant women and women of childbearing age, infants, which included zero to one years, toddlers, one to three years, and children, three to 12 years. And what, in general, what we found were food and beverages and drugs. These two categories contributed most of the, the exposures for almost all um, the eight phthalates that we looked at. And, you know, within each phthalate, there were some, you know, other products and categories like children's toys, cosmetics. And, and so the, the executive summary, you know, gives a brief overview of, you know, the overall methodology, that how, you know, what steps were taken to come up with these final tables or results. And then it uh, looks at each subpopulation and, and kind of gives like a short summary of, you know, what the overall exposures were and, and you know, from which product categories they, they came from. Um, I think that's, uh, you know, the main gist of the, the executive summary. And, and again, the, uh, just a little bit about the, the process that, that we went through to come up with these numbers. Uh, the first thing, of course, was to compile uh, phthalate concentrations. So we looked at a variety of data sources. The main objective was to look for data that, was, uh, that belonged to the U.S. and that was um, published or, or, or researched uh, in the last 10 years. Um, that was the first step. We created a, a database of these uh, phthalate concentrations. The second step was to look at, uh, you know, some human behavioral patterns, uh, which mainly relates to how humans react or, or, or uh, behave um, in, in a variety of media or how they interact with some of these products to which, you know, they could be exposed to, to phthalates. And then these factors were then combined with the equation, uh, with the, the concentrations in specific equations to come up with estimates of uh, daily exposures. Now, the exposures that we calculated, there were two metrics that we used. Since we had a variety of concentrations, we decided to use, uh, for simplicity purposes, the average concentrations and the 95th percentile concentration. So, so what that means is I, I'll give a, a very small example. For example, let's say we looked at uh, phthalate concentrations for DEP in cosmetics, um, 
and we were trying to look at how uh, women could be exposed to this through inhalation. So we looked at specific uh, studies which had values of DEP uh, concentrations. Uh, so we obtained, say, 20 concentrations for different studies, and they all were concentrations of DEP in a variety of cosmetic products. So what we decided to do then is for each product type, um, we decided to take the average DEP concentration among the list of you know values that we found and also the 95th percentile of those values. And then these two metrics were then used uh, in combination with the exposure factors to come up with the mean exposure and the 95th percentile exposure. Uh, this was done across all exposure routes, all product categories, and all of the eight phthalates. And then they, these results were then aggregated uh, to come up with these daily uh, aggregate tables that I talked about in the beginning. Um, that's all that I have for the, the executive summary. I just asked a question about style. Um, so I see you've got pages and pages of references, mm -hmm. um, but they don't seem to be referenced in the document. Um, well, that actually, the, the reason for that is these references were all studies, articles uh, that we looked at mostly to compile the, the phthalate concentrations, but also ex, you know, some exposure factors. So some of these values you will find in uh, the tables for the exposure factors. The rest of it, I believe the majority of it can be found in the tables that have the concentrations. Now, the tables that have the concentrations are currently in, in an Excel workbook. Um, they were not provided in the report, but the mean and the 95th percentile concentrations, which were the values that were actually used to come up with the exposure, have been provided in the, in the report. So a more basic question, though, like I'm reading the second paragraph of the executive summary, it refers to the indirect method of assessing phthalate exposure to humans. I mean, not being in this field, are there references that could be added there for largely to give the impression that this is not a new these aren't new approaches that these are approach that you're following sort of you know high quality but standard methods um, yes somebody not in the field that would help me just to give me a, an anchor um, sure there are plenty of those references correct Sorry? there are yeah. plenty of references for that do you have them Serge or do you need to be directed to them no 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 I can I can, I can put those in. I think there are three or four that are mine. Right. And, and then also in Table 9 on pages 21 and 22, it refers to equation numbers, but I don't see where the equations are. I was very curious to see the equations, and I couldn't find them. The equations should be in Appendix A, oh. which start from page 36 and go on all the way to 37. Oh, 37. There's, there it is. Okay, thank you. Do you think we need to put something in there to give you direction? That would have helped me. But. Serge, can you modify that to give her a clear indication that these equations Equation numbers will be are found in Appendix, in Appendix A? A? Okay, uh, and you were referring to uh, which table? So table, table. Ta well, in Section 9, Table 1, okay. on page okay. 21, uh -huh. mm -hmm. the last column refers to equation numbers. Okay. Right. So, so just say something like, you know, provided in, you yes. know, appendix. Yes, that would be helpful. From, yep. yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Serge, everything you can make clearer makes things easier. Okay. Okay. So, just to be, I'm sorry, I'm maybe thick about this, but... So it looks like in Appendix A, you've got, you know, inhalation exposure, direct and indirect, the oral, different kinds of exposures. Mm 
-hmm. Is there an equation for how you got to the cumulative? Uh, no, no. And and um, all all we did was just uh, an arithmetic. You know, we we just added those values up. But um, you know, um, if if that's something that uh, you know, you feel that we need to specify, uh, you know, we can definitely, you know, write that up, that, uh, you know, be a little more uh, specific about how we came up with the, the aggregate values. I think that would be worthwhile. We've been doing that with everything else today. Okay. So, therefore, doing it for what you've done is consistent with everything we're doing. Okay. To make right. the report clearer. And is that a standard way of doing it, just yeah. to add across the different exposure routes? Well, as long as you have it in the units they have it, which are milligrams per kilogram per day, and it's the right biological response that we're looking at, and they're all the same, yes. If you do it willy-nilly, no. You know, like, let's say you're looking at inhalation versus dermal versus ingestion, and you're looking at, you know, effects that only occur associated with one of those pathways, well, then adding it up is kind of ridiculous. You just focus on the one. So it's all contingent upon what you're doing with the data. So by, am I correct to say by adding it up like that, what's a low value in one is going to stay, like adding lows and lows and highs and highs? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. But it's also because of the fact there's a consistency in what we think of the, you know, the health outcome is and based upon the impact. There, I mean, there's no other way to do it. No. Um, it, unless you wanted to do a, you know, Monte Carlo type analysis, but with this right. big, uh, yeah. but yeah. the data is so so. I, I think largely, from from my perspective, looking at it from not being in the area, as long as it's sort of the standard, the state yeah. of the art for doing it, I think that's fine. It just needs to be specified like that. I think. Yep. But then the, the big numbers that we're getting from this, I think based on the discussion we had this morning, is going to be what's the percentage of exposure, you know, what, for example, DEHP, it says, where did I read that? 84% um, of the exposure. It's diet. Not, you know, so those percentages come from taking the total mm -hmm. and then going back not Correct. to t types of exposure, but then looking at it by ordering it by chemical, right. right? So that's a direct calculation from that distribution mm -hmm. of the sum. Yeah, I mean, there are two ways of slicing it, by chemical and by source. Is it worth putting that? I think we have. Specified? We put that in the summary report. We put that in the, the small short report. We stated that's how we did it. We sliced by both directions. Do you have that in your executive summary? I think that's the, the critical issue that Chris is bringing up. The fact that these things are sliced in many different ways. Uh, You're sighing, so that means you don't. I'm trying to, to be honest with you, I'm trying to think if that was something that, you know, we had included. Well, no, it's, it's here, it's in the third paragraph. Sorry, I'm just it now is in the paragraph? It. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Serge, you no, did the no right problem. thing. <laughs> Yes, sir. I, I'm still having some problems understanding the data because we are hopping from uh, absolute numbers to relative numbers. We are hopping from uh, the daily intakes from the aggregate exposure way in micrograms per kilogram per day yeah. to saying later that 80 or 90 percent is from the diet. So let me give an example now. Sure. Let's look at the data for toddlers, for example. DEHP in the Versa report, the aggregate exposure is 2,133. Can you give us a page number? That's table six, page 25 of the report. That's here. Yeah, uh, the lowest, the, 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 
lowest line, HP 2133. <clears throat> I assume that this is the median aggregate exposure. Correct. Mm -hmm. If I now assume that uh, only 1% comes from toys and childcare products, assuming that 99% uh, is from the diet, mm -hmm. this would still mean that we have 20 micrograms per kilogram body weight per day, which would still be above the tolerable intake for or the reference dose. So this is the problem I have looking at the absolute numbers in relation to the relative percentages of the daily intake via the diet and the sources we have to focus on. Why is that a problem? Because if it's still above the daily intake, then that's still a problem, even though it's a small percentage. Yes. That means, that means the issue is exactly. that so this, 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 this phthalate is really out there at levels in all exactly. routes of exposure yeah. that may be of significance to the health yeah. and welfare of a pregnant woman or child. Yeah. In other cases, it may not be. Yeah. So what I mean, it is interesting to know the, the quantification of the of the roots, but as we pointed out it, this morning, we maybe need some information on the closeness to, to the reference dose of the daily intakes we calculate for the routes of relevance for us here, for the toys and childcare products. But didn't we do that? It's it's not that clear in in other tables here. I thought it was clear because in it's in like in table two. It only says the percentage. I thought it was clear in the in the short report. Yeah, but you have to to jump between the tables. I don't know how you're going to not jump between the tables. There are just a lot of data points. Remember, we're cross we're doing cross sectional analysis but among exactly. two different. We we basically have a three dimensional plot, and we're trying to understand. This is sources. This is um, phthalates. And this is the exposure. But if and you have a look at table two, for example, then if you scroll up. Yeah. Here you see the, the hard numbers. You know that uh, for DHP we have 2,133 micrograms per kilogram per day average daily intake. And now we look at the, at the percentage table mm -hmm. and look at DHP. Right. We see that 74% is uh, diet and 24% mm -hmm. is, is APRO. Mm -hmm. So that's for the pregnant women if we scroll down to the toddlers. Right. For infants and toddlers? Toddlers here. DHP. So it's now that not that clear anymore because. Why? It's the drugs in that case? It's drugs. No, DEP. It's still diet. Now it's toys. It's only 0.2%. Where's toys? Toys, 0.2%. Yeah. For, for the toddlers, not. Uh, where are we now? It's infants. Table We're four. in infants. Let's, four is you the want toddlers. Toddlers? Okay, toddlers. So it's 0.2%. Right. But giving. The 0.2% we have, we have to, we have to know the absolute number, which is, which it is it in terms of of the daily intake. Exactly. Yeah. In order to say, is it 0.2% might be a critical value. Why? Although it doesn't look critical. 97% <laughs> comes from diet, it's not a critical value. It's still within the noise. Yeah, but what I try to say, if it's, if it, if it's only 1 or 2%, mm -hmm. the Estimated intake from the aggregate exposure approach would still be above the tolerable daily intake. Even if from the aggregate exposure approach, the majority is still from diet. Yeah, I agree. I, I said that before. But no, but that's me. I think that we need to find another way, yeah. another way to present the data. Maybe an additional table. That All right. Tells so we, us bas basically, what you want to do, then what you want is not another table. Well, yeah, another table, which basically takes these percentages, takes the values, and figures out. 
the actual amount. Maybe in brackets how much percent of the TDI it is. Can that? Yeah. Well, if we agree on what the T, you know, which which case value? one, case two, or case three. What yeah, are we going to do? Is case one, case two, or case three, right? Or all three. Could use all three, maybe? No, but no, 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 no. 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 Oh, well, I mean, it's, but to, uh, I mean, you can do it and in, in pick out, you know, uh, highlight cases that are important, like toys or anything else. Sure. I think just do it for toys, not everything else, because toys is our real charge. And, and we can... I'll also address some of this in our reports that we're writing. So. Yeah, but what would what he's asking for here, and we have. Yeah, I mean, you can't do that in your report. You're right. Oh, well, actually, I'm asking for simplicity. Well, not, you're asking for simplicity from complexity, which is hard yeah. to deal with, with the fact that there's so many different range of values. But it's not inconceivable that can be done. But as you said this morning, we have to somehow present. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. And I figure. Yeah. Could that be a yes, I think sure. That's what they, they need to. That's a table they need to pull out for us and then put in the show. Am I on? Can I ask a more basic question before we start talking those kinds of tables? So looking back at the, the table Holger first pointed us to, um, table 6 on page 25, do we need to have some explanation? If I'm looking at tape, you know, the biomonitoring median estimates, the Wormerth intermediate intake, the Clark median, which seem relatively table comparable. Six. Table 6 on page 25. Right. But then if you look at the Versar aggregate human exposure averages, some of those are an order of magnitude or, or more bigger than the others. Do right. we need an explanation of that? Or have you explained that and I just haven't caught it? We've explained it briefly um, in the executive summary as well as the, the main body. Um, and and, and I, can, I can quickly touch on those topics. Uh, you know, the, the two main things that we believe uh, result in and, and again the numbers are mainly high for for like two of two of uh, the the phthalates out of the eight the others are you know within an order comparable but especially for DHP and DEP they're like really really high and um, we believe one of the things is that when we were uh, looking at concentrations when we were compiling the data um, we looked at all the possible values that we could compile in some cases, um, the idea, the I, the overall goal was to look at you know averages. So if the study mentioned several values, we tried to pick up the average value that they had uh, provided, and then we compile all these values, and we then calculated an average out of those average values. But in some cases, the averages were not recorded. In some cases, the only the only uh, you know statistic that was provided was like a high-end number, like a 75th percentile or a 90th percentile. And at that point, we just you know, made the decision that we are going to include whatever data we can find in this table, in this database. So the, the averages that we calculated um, include some of these high-end estimates. Uh, and because we have a lot of values, a lot of concentrations for DEP and DHP, you know, of course, a lot of studies have been done. Um, some of these numbers are, are on the higher side. Um, we did have a discussion with uh, Paul and, and CPSC um, a few weeks back where, you know, we, we decided that one of the ways to, you know, to maybe do a better estimate would be to filter out some of those high-end estimates. Um, and, and we have made a mention about that approach in the, in the report, but we, you know, haven't done that. And, and the other reason for this is, uh, especially when it comes to uh, looking at the human behavioral uh, patterns, a lot of those values were just not available. Um, we could not find it. We spent a lot of time, and in, in a lot of cases, we used professional judgment. 
and most of those judgment calls were on the conservative side, which which also resulted in you know uh, us getting high numbers. Yes, so we believe that these two are the could 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 potentially be the main reasons for uh, some of those numbers being really really high. And these really are averages, not medians, because we've been using the words back and forth. No, these yeah. are averages. Yeah. Yes, averages. these are averages. Okay. See that now in, in the last paragraph of the executive summary. I think you. I think that's a good. You address that well in the in that paragraph. Been a lot of time talking about it, but the more clarity it gives you, the better off we are. Can I jump in here? So if we have a look at DHP, for example, the Versailles report for the females had 107, 106.5, mm -hmm. and the modified report has 1.7. Is this drop caused, as you said, mainly by new data on the foot side, or is it caused by new data on the toys and child care product side? Yeah, I think it's mostly on the uh, food side because the exposure is dominated by food and one of the the things that uh, we saw was in, if you look at the exposure data uh, we were using you know Clark's database that has pretty much everything ever published and uh, as you go back in time there were a few very old studies that were driving up mm -hmm. the exposures the averages and uh, you know that could have been an analytical issue most likely um, but what so what we decide I mean surge was basically trying to use all the data that was available and that presents it, it's hard to combine data from different studies because you have different quality different metrics and so on uh, and that's a problem in itself but mm -hmm. what we elected to do uh, a few weeks ago at that meeting is we recalculated uh, the food exposures using two data sets one is from the UK from 2011 that surge didn't have we didn't know about it um, and another one was the next best thing was page and LaCroix which is from Canada and it was published in the 90s but I think the data is actually from the 80s um, and so by using instead of trying to combine studies we took the two best quality studies and the you know the levels were the page and lacrosse the level the exposures are down what that table you're referring to is using the UK data and they're even a little bit lower using that data and that's what's shown there when we get our reports written you'll have all the information um, but we also just looked at all the uh, uh, other scenarios and, and tried to, instead of using all the data, look at, uh, you know, a small number of recent high-quality studies. Um, otherwise, I mean, you know, you can't really, it's hard to average the, you know, say the upper, the 95th percentile across a bunch of different studies and so on. Um, but we did it in the course of doing this. We also did get, a, I think, a good sense of what the uh, sensitivity is. I mean, if you use somebody else's food data, you know, if you use uh, the uh, Page and LaCroix data instead of the UK data, that's, you know, maybe a factor or two in the exposure. If that, I actually, I think it's less, but less, yeah. you know, we have a pretty good handle on, you know, you change any of these assumptions or the data sources this is what happens so if the changes in the foot route is responsible for a drop from 107 to 1.6 is the statement still true that the majority of the intakes is from foodstuff yes yeah um, so now we we looked at everything now uh, of course one thing when we're talking about phthalates from the toys of course, right now there are no phthalates in toys. This is based on uh, the assumption that they, they are, you know, if they're being used, this is what the exposure is. Um, and uh, also, 
in looking at toys, you can use, you know, the mouthing duration. There are all sorts of estimates. Like a child's total mouthing time is mostly fingers. As you narrow the scope, that time gets smaller. And we used all soft plastic articles is what's currently, what's reflected in those calculations that we have. It's a little, it's a little bit conservative, but not as conservative as the number that Surge was using. But at least we know, you know, we can tell you, if you change this assumption, we can generate, you know, many matrices of numbers. But, you know, we have a pretty good sense on, of, you change this, this is what the result is. So sensitivity analysis gives you an idea where your biggest weaknesses are. And we don't have to, you know, worry that, geez, if we change this, what will happen? Because we've done it. So am I understanding then that the report that's in tab eight is the final report from Versar? It's the draft final. We get one more crack. But the, I mean, the bottom line is they can't do any new work. You know, we can't, we have them go back and do new, like put in the UK data, which we didn't have before, without having a new contract. So that's why we're adding, doing that ourselves. So how is that going to be, so the Versar report will be an appendix in the NI report? The plan is it will still be there, but there will also be two memos from CPSC, one on phthalates and one on substitutes. The phthalates one will explain this. Yeah. The disparity. And our plan all along is, mostly because of money, is to have Versar do the basic work. We would get a bunch of spreadsheets, and then, you know, the CHAP, Paul, whoever wants to, can, you know, put in new data or, you know, the substitutes weren't even in the original report. I mean, once you had all those spreadsheets, you could go back and do any sort of what if type of analysis. But we weren't. But are we saying, though, that the table, when we have a comparison table? Yes. Will the numbers on the comparison table be new numbers that aren't included in the Versar? The CPSC number, where it says CPSC, that those are the new numbers that are not in the Versar report. And the Versar numbers are the ones in the Versar report. I see. Okay. We're not going to change those numbers. What we're doing is we're writing a memo saying that there's certain data that we noticed in the Versar report which are old, and we had new data, and being diligent about this, we put in the new data. And this is the numbers that were achieved. Again, you know, it all comes down to the fact that there are so few numbers out there. I know, but... And you do the best you can with the limited data you got. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just want to, you know, 10 years from now, we look back at this, are we going to be able to understand where the CPSC numbers come from? Yes, there will be a memo. There will be an absolute memo in the report that says specifically, we did this because we found that. And so, therefore, there's a divergence between Versar and... But down to the detail of what was done, not just the general description. Oh, yeah. No, it's the... We're drafting the memos. We came up with this plan on, what was it, January 23rd we met? Yeah, whatever date we met. And that's how we decided to move forward. It was felt it was essential. No, I agree with that. I just wanted to understand that. No, I understand, totally. Will that be an appendix? Yes, it'll be another appendix or sub-appendix, something like that. It won't be a surprise. The questions, comments, sir? So the numbers regarding the routes of exposure, the importance of the different routes of exposure would not change from the Versa report after the CPSC modifications. No, I, I, 
I think the relative numbers are very similar. So I would propose, as we have done for the biomonitoring approach, something like an, a simplification of the results in terms of the routes of exposure, as Paul pointed out, which are in our focus. We could say that, let's say, for example, 5% of the total mm -hmm. exposure route is within the CPSC perspective. Mm -hmm. This would come down to a daily intake of this and that, which would be around 5% of the tolerable daily intake of the reference dose. I think this would perfectly put the data into perspective without being relative in a way. No, actually, that wasn't. That's a previous conversation, and yeah. right. That's yeah. what I think we agreed. That yeah, but that I think we do, with this we period. would have a perfect line from the percentage, yeah. the importance of the overall routes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. distilling it down to the point. So you're where it's summarizing what we want to do. Yeah, because we we discussed this, and I think we're all in total agreement. Well, no, this was a summary. Okay, cool. Just okay, for you to remember. Oh, cool. Not sure we need to do all three cases. Do you? I mean, just we're pick a case. Pick. Case A, one, two, or three. Three. One. Or conservatively, you could use the smallest one, the minimum of the three. No, no, I want to use one. <laughs> okay. Then we're going all over the place. Pick one. Doesn't matter. You could mirror the table we have with the ranges of points of departure and the ranges of margins of safety of exposure. You want to do all three? That would that would be a perfect mirror of it's I think that's confusing. If what we're looking at is a relative ranking with respect to you know, an index, we don't need all three. We really don't. We're just going to focus on kids' toys and the ratio of the absolute number for that kid to the absolute number of either case one, two, or three as a reference. What do you want to choose? I think we have time to sleep what? over it. Because this is not a television <laughs> show to decide one, two, or three. I think we might make up our minds for tomorrow. He's worried about the tiger behind door, door number three. No. <laughs> yes, it is. We right, actually are on TV right now. It's real. <laughs> they call it reality TV. So you want to sleep on it for 24 hours and decide one, two, or three? It's my decision, yes. I will come to this decision. Okay. Well, calculating them is easy, yes. and then it's just a matter of to Putting simplify the presentation. Guys, is it a stupid proposal or is it okay? No, I think it's a. I think it's a good point. It's not a stupid proposal. It's just we want to do one, two, or three, not all three. We agree with you. In so I, I try to be a cri bit critical, because Andreas, oh, obviously, he is. He's in. I don't know. He's on medication or something. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> has to be critical. Here. I think it's very important because you could look at a very small percentage and say that's not important. But Holger's point is it could be important if the exposure estimate is large enough. You will not get a disagreement out of me on that at all. Right. The question is, is what am I using as my denominator? That's the only question I have right now. The principles are clear. The principles are solid. The issue is not debated. The only thing I care about is what's my de denominator. That's all I care about at this point. What is complicated in the pro approach if we mirror <laughs> our approach with the three cases and the range? What is complicated in it? Because it's the same approach. If you want more simplicity, you can choose one case. I would propose to implement all three of them at the range. You know, um, you, it's easy to calculate. I know it it's, is. It's just we can so. type up a table, and if it looks too complicated, we can simplify it. And we say we're doing this just for toys? Yeah. For the 
sources of relevance yeah. to the CPSC. To the CPSC. I wouldn't, is it just, it's also childcare products? Okay, yeah. Yeah. Whatever, whatever it is, I use toys as a simplistic explanation for what our charge is. These calculations are based on the Versa approach or the CPSC modifications, or equal to uh, or the the late or or the latest whatever. Well, for ones where we need to make changes, we'll use the latest, and the rest will be Versa. All depends upon whether we have more data. When we have more data, we'll use the more current, and that would reduce confusion. As Mike said, we, we, we could generate some data and then simplify it on the way. See what happens. I have a small. So, um, in the report, uh, I think it was the report, the, uh, box, the uh, pie charts on page 31, figure 5 of the Versa report, will they be in color? Well, yeah, we're we're discussing that, that we. Um, I don't know. We could put them in color. It's expensive. I mean, it's a question of. I don't even know if this report is going to be printed or purely electronic. Um, one of the issues is getting all those different uh, shades to display and. Really read. Yeah. Well, we we need to work on just the the mechanics of getting Excel to make black and white pie charts or whatever. So okay, we're so working that on will, that. But you are working on yeah. being able to read it even if yeah, black it is, and white. Yeah, that's an issue. Okay. And I imagine that's true for our report as well, if they are pie charts. Yeah, I don't know. Anything else? Sorry. One other thing, the calculations, will they be only done for the median or also the upper bounds? Well, say that again. The calculate the table. I do not want for to the do the upper the, bounds. And the upper bounds. Just the medians. No upper bounds, because they're so, they're so all over the place. I think that we'd be putting ourselves at risk. So pushing a little further, may I push a little further? So when we get to, um, I think I'm in the right spot, the, um, sec what's now section G, which may be moved up, but, um, so the conclusions there, it talks about, you know, the highest um, estimated phthalate exposure to women were associated with DEP and DEHP. The main source of phthalate exposure for pregnant women of childbearing age were food, beverages, and drinks. Are, can we be more specific? I mean, do we know more about what kinds of foods or what kinds of drugs or what kinds of anything? Is there anything that can? I doubt it. I mean, that that's drilling down much farther than we can ever go. That need to be stated that that's at that point we're at the limit uh, limitation of our. I don't understand why we care for this report. Do I care whether it's apples or? I have. I mean, from a consumer perspective, from a consumer's perspective, we have to eat. If you can give me guidelines of what not to eat, I, I <laughs> I'd don't be think that's, very appreciative. I don't think that's. Again, we're going outside the bounds of where I think we belong. That's something we should just turn over 
to FDA and EPA saying, here's what we found, food is an issue, and you have all different types of food and food processing issues, it's up to you to deal with it. I but, just don't think but, we're, but, I just but think but we're just way, way out of bounds there. But, Paul, even just stating that's beyond the, the scope of this analysis would be helpful, maybe to limit it, you know, put the bound on what we can say about this. I think there are other papers have suggested that it's uh, um, more like fatty foods and dairy now. I think some of that may be in the analysis uh, that Kent did on the food for the food. So, yeah, it's going to be in, in, in our memo. Uh, what are the dry, the main sources in, in terms of food? So th it is going to be that, yeah. And for, I mean, the other sources the, the is... Gen general classes, nothing. Yeah, you know, very like, general. I mean, it's going to be like meats and dairy or something fine. like that. I'll go for that, but nothing more because no. we're putting ourselves at serious risk because we don't know, we really don't know what what's causing it. It would be unfair to the public. Remember, Chris, this is historical data, too, so yeah. if having it too specific wouldn't be relevant to 2012. Right. But again, the point is well taken that for the consumer, we should know, but I think it's incumbent upon other agencies to pick up the ball and run with it. And, you know, we don't want to, over, I guess, overstate it and cause a panic. Yeah, uh, that's true. Yeah, the newspapers would take away with it. Mm -hmm. Serge? Yes. Okay. All right. We're just wondering if you were still with us. Yes, I am. Do you have anything to say? Um, no. No, I mean, you know, Chris brought up a whole bunch of good points. Yeah. I think, I think this is a, a very nice report. It's clearly a lot of work. Um, trying to put it down in paper is even harder sometimes. So, job. Yeah, I, I think that's, that's, that's very true. But, um, you know, it was also a very... Uh, a very interesting, very challenging, and very fruitful effort, I think, <laughs> from our part. But um, I've I've been making notes, and and I think I have three things in in my list that um, you know need to be uh, addressed, and they're mainly in the form of you know just adding text to to the report. Um, so you know I I, I can do that, and uh, Mike, I will uh, try to uh, submit it to you um, as soon as soon as I can. Good. Oh, okay. I mean, we'll. Um, we're still looking at it, so we may have a couple of things too. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Okay. Thank you, Serge. All right. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your patience. No problem. It was a, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks to everybody, and uh, you know, have a nice day, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Okay, I think we'll uh, move on now to uh, look at the uh, recommendations. Okay, so if you will all turn to uh, tab 10. And Mike, I don't know whether you have these that you can, can pull, pull up. up. Now what I'd like to do is to to use the uh, information that we've talked about uh, this morning and, and this afternoon and apply that wisdom uh, to the recommendations for each of the phthalates and phthalate substitutes and, and see how far we can 
yep. this afternoon and then uh, hopefully uh, finish up early tomorrow morning. So, oh, yes. Uh, but before we do that, it's past we'll, tea we'll, time. We'll take, we'll take a tea break for our <laughs> British colleague. Yeah, but it's well past his tea time, though. And reconvene, um, let's say, in 20 minutes. Okay. You have to take tea seriously. <laughs> I do. Wife drinks it all the time. All right, welcome back. Uh, let's spend the next hour starting the um, our recommendations on the at how many phthalates and, and uh, phthalate substitutes. So tab number 10. <clears throat> and we, just to refresh your memory, um, Section has the criteria. Do you remember what section that? Anyway, that's we had agreed on on the format that you see on on this first one for uh, dimethyl phthalate. Where we go with the adverse effects, animal, reproductive, developmental, human, and relevance to humans, weight of evidence, experimental design, replication, risk assessment considerations, exposure, hazard, and then number five is recommendation, and then point six, with this recommendation, if implemented, be expected to reduce exposure of children to, in this case, DMP. And so we filled in one through four, and now uh, based on that, what I want to do is complete items five and six for uh, all the phthalate and phthalate substitutes. Yeah, now the criteria are in tab three, page 57, but they're pretty much that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'd like to take a, a few minutes to just read over uh, information on dimethyl phthalate, then we can discuss and begin filling in the CHAP recommends and put in some text.
and these were drafted, I forget exactly when, but they're, they, I'm not sure they are, oops, the summary is, uh, reflects what's currently in the chat report, although I don't think if this information would have changed much. I mean, we do, well, there is biomonitoring mentioned there, so. Sounds like we need. Sounds like we need Hulger's table to complete the picture. That even though in percent toys that it may be two percent, what percentage of the daily intake is that? Is it a, a is it a hazard index above one, below one? That would that would complete the puzzle. Do we have BMP in, in our hazard index approach? No, no. it's not in there because it's not in deep. It's not in <clears throat> So we could even take it out. Well, if you want, I would leave it in, but also the margins of exposure is it from some preliminary work or that? I don't know. I, 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 yeah, where did that come from? I, I think that's probably from a couple meetings ago when we, you first. Raise the the margin of exposure. Yeah, I think we took it out because we have problems fixing a point of departure for. So section. Oh yes, is there no data? Yeah. yeah, that's it. So under weight of evidence too, it talks about a no AL, which we don't really have. I think at one point we were using 750 milligrams per kilogram per day as a, just a value. Um, but we've moved away from that now. Um, just a quick question, the, um, there's a couple of abbreviations here which are funny in my opinion. What's capital MK on um, a animal adverse effects developmental if you go up the page before I think it's milligrams per kilogram yeah could that not be written like that because well I think it mean well yes uh, it, it's milligrams per kilogram per day well there's an MK and then there's an MKD MKD. Is, an MK. is this um, is this a new generally recognized abbreviation which hasn't yet filtered through to Europe or well I I haven't seen it in print I use it for shorthand yeah it, it, that probably should be MKD or are the more usual way of putting it instead of the MK well yeah I mean this if this is going to be in the reports, we can certainly edit it. Change it, yeah. And Phil, there's, um, in terms of no human, no published human studies, they, they did measure MMP, I think in the SWAN study and one of the other AGD papers. They didn't find any associations, but so it wouldn't, yeah, so it wouldn't be correct to say no published. Uh, you could say no no associations found in, and I, I can look at, I think it was a swan, and I'll look right now. Mike, do you want to put that in? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to. Well, if I may kick it off here, I think this is a fairly straightforward case. There's no case to answer. Right. There's no. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. And so the the recommendations are permanent ban, interim ban, or no action at this time. Well, I'd say no action at this time. No action at this time. Yeah. Make more Agreed. of it. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't say that. No action. <laughs> I'll let it slide. 
so as that, long as you stay in front. <laughs> that makes point six moot. Yes, absolutely. Getting back to seriousness. But just as in terms of style, so we spent the morning talking about you know hazard indices for the mixtures and um, et cetera, et cetera. But then there's no mention of sort of the mixture part of all of this. Do we need to make reference to? Um, I know we're, we're doing individual wouldn't chemicals. This would be part but of the mi a mixture that you considered, right? Uh, it wasn't included because we didn't have information about a reference dose, right? Right. But just in terms of a style for, that so wouldn't pertain to this one. Maybe I'll hold my question until we get to that. Yep. Okay. I think that's better. E. So moving on to, you get the, the Swan study in there, Mike, or? Yeah, I just wrote a note to, to add it in okay. at some point. Okay. So it's Swan at all? S U Z U K I. And then moving on to D E P diethyl mm -hmm. phthalate. This is a the first question I have <clears throat> when we're dealing with tricky issues is it in terms of our charge, the specific charge, kids' toys and child care products, are we looking at that as being a major source? Because it's not here in the statement. We haven't said anything about it. And what do we have in there? Zero. Well, it's 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 low. Well, from toys, it's zero. Yeah. Toys. See, th that's when I looked at DEP. I remembered that that that's pretty much zero. Well, so, if we look at the moms, it's a little different. Mom's has a little bit of influence for cosmetics, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, it's, it's, 
mostly cosmetics. And drugs. And drugs can be high if you, depending on what ones you, you're taking. But drugs is outside the realm of our purview, as well as cosmetics? Well, drugs and cosmetics are out of, outside of CPSC's purview. Right. It's there, but to update the exposure <clears throat> section on this one. You're on DEP now. Yes. Yeah. And and the human would need be, need to be updated too. I I think Burn wrote this, and and these are focused on well at least the first three the semen quality studies, which are really deep in the appendix. You know, just a short paragraph. Um, and I'd have to look through no, no. the oh, AGD no, and the neuro studies because there was there were some associations in the neuro studies but the question is you know how much detail do you want here because it'll repeat what's in the short part of the epi session section yeah do you want bullets like this or more of an overall i think so because we're going to use our judgment based upon everything that's in this document to make this recommendation. So I don't think we need to have exhaustive detail here. I can do that between now and tomorrow morning when we okay. meet. I would draft a few. Okay. I would enumerate, I would give every study the effect and the effect. Study and effect. I would just name the study and the effect. Basically, what yeah. what they found, what association? Yeah, yeah. Yes. So you say there are studies in addition to the to the four that are listed here. Well, I, I would scratch the first three because those are the semen quality studies that we haven't even focused on in the short report part, and I'd focus on the neurodevelopmental. Okay. And the AGD papers. And just from memory, it, it's going. I'll look at it. You know, this evening, but it'll be a little difficult because the Mount Sinai uh, School of Medicine studies, they use an exposure metric of low molecular weight phthalates, which are, in this case, are largely driven by the MEP, but it's not only MEP. Yep. So it's hard to then say there was an association between MEP and, you know, whatever it may be mm -hmm. on their neurodevelopmental tests. It would be more. There's an association between low molecular weight phthalates and such, and DEP is a major contributor to the low molecular weight yep. phthalates. Well, if we if we flip the questions around at the end, would this recommendation reduce exposure to, of children? I think the answer to that, whatever we recommend, would be no. Right. Wouldn't it? Because DEP is not extremely relevant in toys, right. if at all, really. Toys and kids' right. chair, personal hmm. care products, and also the products yeah. that women use that are under the jurisdiction of CPSC. Yeah, I'm a bit. What about uh, personal care products? Personal care products are all under the jurisdiction of FDA. I mean, they're a significant source. For women? For women and even for kids. So what do you have jurisdiction over exactly? We have jurisdiction, well, uh, not food, drugs, cosmetics, medical devices, or pesticides. Can we get the opposite? We do have... Uh, Teethers, toys, home furnishings, uh, construction materials in your home. So maybe we need a statement 
saying for the materials that are under the jurisdiction of CPSC, which include A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, for the reductions in children's trivial. However, this is a meaningful phthalate, and other agencies need to consider it seriously in their evaluations of their products and under their jurisdiction. Yes, wonderful. I like that very much. Yep, I agree. In that way, we yeah. protect ourselves by saying this is not a trivial issue. Yeah. But we cannot force other agencies to take to take hold of what we think is a problem. Yeah. And that CPSC is not the bearer of the bad news because okay. they are not in any way, shape, or form the highest percentage or. Wonderful. I couldn't agree more. And I let, think that's the us, way to do it. Craft language right now for that. All right. And just for, to answer Paul's questions home furnishings, air fresheners, paints and adhesives, uh, the air and dust are in, indirectly could come from products. The children's teethers and toys, uh, things like changing pads and play pens, uh, rainwear, rubber gloves. And but for a lot of these, uh, I mean, uh, for diethyl, you're talking air freshener, paints, and uh, okay. maybe paints and adhesives. I don't care about the individual chemicals. Yeah. What I'm saying is that we need a statement saying that you know, what, your, what your concerns for are. For the products that are under CPSC's jurisdiction yeah. and list each one of them, yep. our recommendation is X. And then for this particular cons com for this particular chemical, we say, we do note, however, there are significant exposures to this chemical and that it has toxic implication. Well, I don't know, what, whatever your word you want to use, Andreas, and that the, that, uh, the other agencies and organizations which deal with products that are listed here under total exposure or risk have to be evaluated. Yep. I think we, we need to indicate for each phthalate where the exposures are coming from that we know about. If we can. If we can. And then indicate which agencies need to be well, I, concerned. I think they're in the report, but I think we can't list them all because we don't know where all the, which agencies have jurisdiction. Because like EPA has some dis jurisdiction okay. on Fair foods, enough. FDA has some jurisdiction. Yep. So it's getting any job. more specific will be really just categories. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, Mike, can we yeah. craft language then? Going down to the point six. Oh, I mean, off. having agreed on a general direction, wouldn't it, uh, uh, the alternative instead of drafting something now would be uh, to delegate to a panel member and uh, tomorrow we revisit that so so we have time yeah, to go through some of this before to, to draft it carefully while while we're on our own and then would that be instead of doing it now which will take a lot of time one substance in okay Holger wants exercise then let's do it for one substance Um, I'd like to back up though to number five before we jump to number six because this is a, this is a chemical that's I, I think a, we've got a little bit of a um, split so information long. about I mean it seems to be that that there's stronger human um, evidence hmm. of, of uh, risk than there is based on the animal studies I mean these this is one of the chemicals that we actually took out of our index because we couldn't decide on a uh, an RFD for this chemical. So, do we need to address that issue? I mean, well, we were going to put that off until Russ developed the rest of that section on the studies that were relevant to the human exposure. Remember, we were going to. But but I thought that there was. Through that discussion, I thought we said that there was some evidence of a, of associations. Yes. Am I yes. overstating yes. that? But then when I look at the animal stuff here, you know, the last sentence, for the most part, these have not been confirmed in animal studies. Right. Right. 
So. I, th I thought we were going to wait until we had those bullets for the human studies before we, so we knew exactly what those were. Yeah, I mean, I could tell you briefly now, or I can put it together and we can look at it in the morning. Yeah, so. I mean, what's your choice? But I agree, Chris, that this is, yep. this will be an unusual case because the animal data suggests that, you know, that there's no effects. And in a few of the human studies, there's associations. But so I guess so your point is um, that the human studies may be n neurological and not. <clears throat> well, Swan, in the Swan paper, they did find associations with decreased AGD. Okay. With MEP. And then I think two or three of the neuro studies as well. I'm starting to put it together now, but I don't think I'll finish before. Well, let's, uh, at Holger's urging, let's go back and, and develop that text. So that, uh, under six, Mike? Yes. Was that verbiage that you de began to develop so brilliantly? Do you want me to write it up? <clears throat> Thanks. Now I'm supposed to write that up, plus I have something. No, no, no. you're supposed to just verbalize it, and Mike's going to type it. Oh, I'll write it. I'll write it. It's still short. I can write it up tonight. Okay, then. I make a start. Uh, for, for the articles or items under the purview of CPSC, there is no exposure reduction expected. By eliminating it. By elimination from, yeah, from these articles or items. However, given the um, level of human and toxicity data? No, and the exposure from, from other sources, food, drugs, etc. It is, it is urgent that other competent authorities in the USI conduct a risk assessment for DEP. I don't even have to mention it right now. Food, diet. <clears throat> um, pharmaceuticals. Pharmaceuticals. Some. Food supplements. Fool's, fool supplements are like that. <laughs> Etc. <cetera. laughs> there is sufficient toxicological and human data? No, I would say, can we change? However, for exposure, no, okay. however, exposures from? To. From. To. No. <laughs> Oh, Exposures from, from oh, so personal care products. To the, product. the, chemical, to the yeah. chemical from. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you get if you lose the products such as. Okay. Yeah. That's it. From from da 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 da. Are are substantial or can be substantial. The there you can lose as well.
and then full stop. Uh, can be substantial. Full stop, and then there is there is a case for other competent authorities in the US to, to conduct sorrow risk assessments for DEP. especially for women of childbearing age. Is it, is it worth making the point that the um although we haven't selected a reference dose from this, but it, there seems to be evidence that the um, potency of this chemical is going to be much less than other chemicals, but the problem is the exposure is so high. Do we need to frame it in that sort of? <clears throat> I, would, I would say the, this formulation would, would put the ball firmly in someone else's Backyard, and uh, you know that sure. the, the, what you've just phrased framed is precisely the risk assessment question. But I'd say it's not for us at this stage to pontificate any further. Yeah, it's. it's the, I know this is a bit of a tactical approach, but I would. Yeah, I, I agree. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that because the statement you made is based purely on the animal data, yeah. right? In terms of the the hazard. Well, let me just be very blunt then. Did we make a mistake taking it out of our analyses? No. Like you misspelled authorities. <laughs> yes, Avi. <laughs> Does it show? Good. So, what are we recommending? No further action or what? Deferred action? This is a case where it's not that the animal data are really negative, it's just that there really aren't, except for the gray study. Yeah, the gray study went out to what, 250 milligrams per kilogram per day and, and did not find significant effects. That was two, one dose. Yes, right. Control and 750. So there is Wasn't some it? evidence that it's less potent than others. Yes. Wasn't a dose response, so we don't know. Had there been a dose response, at what level there might have been a response. Other than that study, there, you're, the other two developmental studies were not done at, at during the window of sensitivity, so those are really not useful. Could we point that out, though? Because this is, it's a little bit, um, I'm worried about this section because we've completely dismissed it in the earlier sections, and now we see, oh, look, that's, there are these three studies. That's contained in the, in the appendix. But here, could this say, these are not in the window of, because it looks like there's a no AL? Some kind of a quality evaluation. I'm looking it, it at is look at the experimental look under weight of evidence experimental design 
The other identified studies have lower confidence since the dosing route in one study was not relevant to the anticipated human exposures in low N. It doesn't say that they didn't. I can update that. Well, I see I was looking in the wrong spot, but yeah, I think that needs to be strong there. Just spot a contradiction, um, I'm sorry. It's, um, if you look under 1A animal, and then a small a reproductive, last bullet point, the paper by Oishi and Hiraga, 1980. It says there they conduct a short-term study and <clears throat> where decreases in serum testosterone were observed after exposure to DEP. If you now turn to number three, weight of evidence under A, second sentence there, it says, in Oishi and Hiraga, increases, increases in testosterone are reported. So. Yeah, that, that's, uh, I don't know. One of them, one of those is wrong. Well, one of them is right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Depends great. on what side of the pond you're on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd have to, uh, that's in Burns. I'd have to look that up. So in, in the text here, when it refers to CHAP, suggests that the male reproductive effect has a NOAL of 750. I mean, that's not, that needs to come out. Under um, section 3B, the last sentence. I don't know where that came from. I think these are still footnotes from your people, Mike. Is it? Well, I, I yeah, read I, this more as a footnote from Kent or somebody. I mean, Kent did this yeah. uh, a while back, so. At one point, we were using 750 just yes. because we it was the best we could find as a conservative value, but then we've decided that that's not good to use, so. Right. I think so. Yeah. That came from. I mean, too, also, the, um, the last sentence of the exposure, section four, talking about margin of exposures. I think that was earlier work that we now aren't using. I think we should get rid of that too. So section 4A, the last, talking about CHAP calculations in Haynes biomonitoring data with margins of exposure. Yeah. Bill, I, I had more of a, I guess, bigger picture question. Just I was just looking ahead to DBP. And if, if you look here, you know, it's two pages ahead, you have, you know, 10 bullets for reproductive, 15 bullets for developmental, human. I mean, it, are we, do we want this level of detail when we get to the recommendations? Because for some, if you look at DBP, which is next, it's basically reiterating most of what was said in other parts of the report. 
right, in, in terms of going through each of the animal studies and each of the human studies again. It's just going to be, you know, if you do this with six or eight phthalates, you're going to be saying the same thing over and over. And you can see with DBP, you know, you have four or five pages, mm -hmm. single space. So, um, it is a convenient organization, we, though, to have, you know, if you're going to look up a chemical, it's all together. Instead of having people read through the whole thing, it is redundant. Yeah, it's very duplicative. And then how short do you want the bullets? Because some of the bullets, you know, looking again at the DBP, you know, you have six or eight lines for each study, and others you may have a line or two. I mean, is there kind of a, a format that we may want to go by or to shorten it in a way? Because I think otherwise, I, I think this was written a while ago as well. So I think each of each bullet is going to be have to be double checked which what was written in the short report in, or in the appendix to make sure it's entirely consistent yeah. and correct. I mean, yeah. we already found that that with the DEP, that OSHI study, one, you know, one said it went up, one said it went down. Yep. Yeah. So and, that, and I, I will and I will do that. I will make sure these agree, and I will go through. And I noticed that the, the bullet on now well, these aren't paginated uh, for DBP on the second page. The top one is you know it's quite long, and I don't think. It yeah. Is. So did we want to think about a a, a format or? Because it, it includes, just, you know, the day, some of them include day of dosing and multiple yeah, doses. Others include very little detail, yeah. but it has to be consistent. Could we just say, you know, the chap in whatever section reported on blah, 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 number of studies, and just summarize, you know, they found at these studies together, or the best studies of those we considered were such and such, and... I, I would pref such and prefer such. that, especially, I mean, as you work your way through the book, I didn't go to DEHP yet, but I bet you that's going to have 40 or 50 bullets, hmm. right? So uh, some kind of short summary that there were, you know, such and such animal studies and the overall conclusion was, yes, it decreased testosterone mm -hmm. or, or no, it and if uh, there something was a, like that. If yeah. there was a, a Noel, then that was maybe report that. And if there's human evidence, report. Yeah, there were, just, you know, uh, of, of the seven human studies, two found or, or four exp measured diethyl or MEP, and two of them found an association with such and such, and leave it at yeah, that. But I, I leave it to the chap, and, you know, I, I just wanted to bring that to your attention. Yep. And I, I, will, I, will, I will do that. But I think we can still go on and do this with what we have, but I'll go and try to shorten But that. you do want a bullet for each study? I mean, look at the DBP. You, you do want to? No, no. Oh, you don't? No, I will go and, and do what Chris suggested. What Chris, okay. Yeah. But I mean, in terms of our deliberations today and tomorrow, we'll just deal with what we have here to make our recommendation. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then I'll yeah. go through and okay. shorten the. And I'll, I'll the same with the human. It'll be yeah. more of a. Rather than a line for each study again, it'll be a few lines together summarizing yeah. what was there or what wasn't. Yeah. Okay. Also, the exposure part can be shortened. Major data on our subsets. I think ultimately each of these recommendations will be a page or, you know, basically mm -hmm. very easy for a reader to yeah. take what the rest of the report said that's there and what the recommendation is. Let's let's go back to the DEP and, and talk some more about this in terms of where we you know we don't essentially have any animal data. I mean, one study by Gray where we don't have a dose response and, and the highest dose didn't mm -hmm. give us any effect. But 
we have human data. What do we say? Well, human data is important. <laughs> so well, the tox data is only in lieu of human data, correct? In my mind, yep. the human data is the driver. If we have no human data, then toxicology does rank higher. I, <clears throat> I agree. That's very relevant in the case of DEP. And that's, I, I think, <coughs> why, as we have now suggested, we should recommend that the other competent authorities uh, look at that in, 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 in very great yeah, detail. I agree. But, I mean, what, given that, what is our recommendation for point five? How, what are we going to recommend to, to who, who? ban, not ban, or no action? Well, Those we are have, our choices. Hmm? How can we ban something in toys when there ain't nothing in toys? Well, that's, that's an issue we need to talk about. I mean, we are given those are the choices that we have. I think, we, I think we should think about the bans or not bans based on public health and then come back and talk about it on specific products. And it shouldn't be six, it should be five, and then That's six. What you're talking about is five. No, no, well. well. Well, I thought that we discussed that. We can, the recommendations which we have to make, that's how I interpret our brief, are in relation to articles under CPSC's purview. Right. Th that being so, we cannot. You say then we would recommend no action. On because children's. it's not relevant to CPSC uh, jurisdiction. Well, we can say more, but but uh, that, that's first of all the bottom line, how I, I interpret it, unless I totally misunderstand things. Or, I mean, the other point to address here now is, would it be meaningful for any reason whatsoever to put DEP into children's toys in the future? But I can't answer that. That's a question for the experts here. So if there's any meaningful pro prospect of that, then, of course, we have to rethink and we have to consider I mean, I, this case more that's, carefully. That's likely um, that it would be used in toys um, because it's a low molecular weight. Thing. But Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're dealing with complex issues. One is you have a ban, but that ban has to be specifically designated, as Andrea says, to the products we have under purview. If we were looking at it from another point of view, we may not say no further action. So we can only say no further action based upon the limited materials and products that we have in our purview. However, the issue of ban does have to be shifted to somewhere else because they have to consider what the heck the, the magnitude of the exposure is in these other products. And so well, it's, there, are, there are other tools before you want to ban something. You know, right. if you... Replacement or... There are other risk management methods available for you to reduce exposure. Right. I mean, we could uh, stick our heads out of the window and say, and the recommendation that we we think, uh, because of the evidence in humans and the effect profile, that uh, expert reduction measures are urgently called for, that's all. But as far as the uh, our remit is concerned, uh, no action because it's irrelevant. Yeah. Right, but I think it's important to clarify whichever statement you make. I mean, if, if you say no action is recommended because DEP is not used in Kids these, toy. right. Yeah, right. we need to. Or if, if <clears throat> yes. Right, but, but I, can, I think it needs to be emphasized, too, because someone could read five and not read six. Um, but I think if you went the other route and you said that the CHAP recommends that DEP be banned from um, use or, you know, whatever, I mean, use that term, it would then have implications for other agencies that regulate, <clears throat> excuse me, DEP and personal care products and other 
situations, right? And, I mean, and Chris, that's point, what. And at this point in time, we can't do that because we don't know what the regulatory requirements are, what the their boundary condition, what their criteria is. We're basically in a theater of the unknown at that point. We don't know what EPA's constraints are. We don't know. Well, what apart from that, we, we if if and Andrea, you, and we don't you know said how they this, do things. The CHAP recommends, based on the human suggestive human data, that DEP be banned. Right? I mean, you. No, no, I didn't, didn't say that. that. You, you didn't, didn't say that. that. No, I think that's very important. We we the the question of a ban is a complicated one. In, in these other areas. The key, uh, you have to think about what do you want to achieve. The, the, a ban is a tool. It will achieve exposure reduction, but really you want exposure reduction, but you can get there by other means. Ban, banning something is the ultimate, the last resort when anything else doesn't work. But it's not for us, and uh, it is indeed a very complicated issue, to decide whether in these areas, cosmetics, um, pharmaceuticals, particularly complicated, uh, whether a ban would really achieve anything or whether other ways of dealing with it are, are viable. I mean, that's something to decide and discuss. That's definitely, I think, beyond our remit. And in, but the key, but, but what we can say, in my opinion, is exposure reduction is, in our opinion, indicated. Right, but Phil, Phil said we had three choices, right, for the recommendation. But then, as, as then we described, not. then say very clearly for, with, for our purview within our remit, there's no point Doing recommending it. any action in relation to toys, however, you know. Remember, we're looking at toys. We're not looking at it in terms of banning the substance. The whole concept is in toys because that's what our charge is. The, old, the fact that the mandate says to look in risk assessment and all that stuff just complicates the fact that we have to consider all pathways, but we have no, we have no, no Paul, jurisdiction I agree, I agree to do completely. anything beyond children's but toys if, or if, products if our that are choices, under If those are our three choices, we need to qualify. Yes. We can't avoid making a choice. Right. If it's choice, ban, interim the choice ban, is and no action. No the choice is no action for the items under our remit, full right. stop. And then a big however. Okay. In bold. Yeah. I think we have to put it in bold. And fat, yeah. Considering, it may, in putting in, considering the fact that total exposure is a public health issue and there are other, there are other roots and products that contain DEP, Responsible agencies or responsible parties must evaluate these things in terms of whether or not they want to do any kind of action whatsoever. But we can say it more clearly. But the key thing is, is that we have to we have to kick it down the road. At that point. Also, have to say something specific as well. Yes. Not just push it off. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I think Andreas, your question is really critical in terms of. Would they would <clears throat> would DEP ever be used in children's toys? Because we're we're making a decision in a point in time, and if if you just left it very vaguely as no action, that could be interpreted as DEP. You know, not saying that it would ever be used in this setting, but it could be. Right? Well, I if, would I would like I I mean if 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 it would make sense, I would. I would be inclined to say uh, something like DEP should, uh, that we think it should never be used in children's toys, but my technical expertise ends here because that statement might, might reveal us out as, as technical idiots because every, everyone familiar with this topic will immediately say DEP will never ever be used because of its uh, chemical properties. But I can't say that. I have to call on my friend Holger. Paul to, to help me out and Mike to help us out here. I, I think it's, it's unlikely to be used. Um, um, if it were, it wouldn't be used as a plasticizer. It'd be, it would be used as a solvent. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have had things, uh, products with methylene chloride and other solvents inside and if it breaks, it can leak out. But I think what, with this uh, document with the six 
bullets. I mean, I, th I think it was drafted, put together with the intention of deciding on the recommendations to the commission, do you ban this or not? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's complicated enough because you, you have to weigh the, the cumulative risk with the individual chemical. Uh, and then you're adding to that the other, you know, what do you do about the total human exposure that's not in CPSC's purview. So it's, it's, a, it's not a simple, simple exercise. Mm -hmm. this, can, can't we, I mean, are we stuck to these six levels? Can we add a, a 5A and a 5B? A 5A I, is public I think, health and a 5B I think, Well, is, I think that's up to the chap. Uh, this was, I, I think Byrne came up with this as a way to help think through all of this stuff. But I think it, it doesn't um, address the issue of the individual phthalate versus total exposure or total cumulative ex at risk. And it also, it doesn't, um, I mean, that's fine if you want to have a, uh, an A and a B where you do the things for the commission and, and recommendations for other. Everybody else, that's well, I think that's what we fine. said. Is that we didn't call it five A and five B. We said it was however. We said, you know, for the material under the purview, this yeah. is our conclusion now. However, that was would be part B. That from the standpoint of public health, this is not a de minimis issue and has to be evaluated by other agencies. And I think that's about as I, far as we can go. I would just reorder them. You I can't, think that because our our permission is to do things for CPSC first. That's our goal. Anything we do beyond that is I'm fine. Looking, I'm looking at on page three of this document, it's talking about, you know, we're supposed to evaluate potential health effects of each of these phthalates. Yeah. That doesn't say each of these phthalates based on toys. It says potential health effects of these phthalates. So I would suggest that part five be, first of all, public health evaluation, overall assessment there. No, no, And then Chris. come back and say, now, how much of that is due to children's toys. Oh. Chris, we, Chris, we can do that in other parts of the report, and I think we, 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 mm -hmm. we can well do that, but this is now about our recommendations. CPSC. Yeah. Right. This is about CPSC we're, recommendations, yeah. not public health recommendations. I think we're in a community, though, in an environment now with the EPA where it is and that. We have an opportunity to say something a little broader than just the narrow CPSC, and I, I would like to take Why that opportunity. B but we will, that. we will do that. We will do that, but not in, in we, we've we just we can't do it though, drafted something yeah. saying over to you, there's a case to answer here. But I would say this is now about our recommendation to CPSC, and we shouldn't muddle these things. Because it's, it's covered partially in six. Right. It's, yeah. it's written there, I think. But I had a hypothetical question, which <clears throat> You love those? So uh, if the EP was contributed, you know, 1% 1, 1 or 10%, whatever, to daily exposure from children's toys, what would your recommendation be? Can you turn on your mic? Out with it. But it can certainly be a you, constituent. You agree as well? In child yes. care products. Child care products are not under their... Well, no. So uh, it's, it's under it's under uh, what you call it. Um, okay. Well, FDA. it depends on how you define. For us, it, child care products could include things like uh, play pens. No, I'm, I'm gonna talk, we're not talking about the de minimis objects. We're not talking about yeah. a person has to have a severe case of pica to even consider. We're talking about things like, you know, any kind of uh, detergents and things of that. But, 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 Russ, but, but can based I, on can that I, hypothetical can question, I repay the I think compliment? It, okay. What would your answer be? <laughs> yeah, would yeah you? I, would, I would agree as well. Okay. But based on the hypothetical question, if, if you know, so far three of us have, have answered to that, I think it's then important, and I think what, Chris, you're getting at in that recommendation to make it clear why we're saying no action. Yeah. Right, Chris, is yeah. that? But I thought we had achieved agreement on that already. We're going to do that. Okay. Yes. I didn't agree with that. Oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, it was. <laughs> because I really think that we have an opportunity to say something about public health. I think to come out in the first statement and say something about in a smaller purview, I think is, is it, it misses the punch. This is the recommendation to CPSC for their products. The and style so of what we write is our choice. 
No, I don't think so because they're going to they're ignore that first statement and then they may ignore everything. You want them to ignore everything because you're going to say public health and they're going to blaze over. These are not scientists. These are people who are here to have a mission as commissioners. And we have to lay out for them in a logical order that they will understand. I think it's unfair to them to do it in an order that meets some public health gain that either any of us would want. I don't think that's fair. Could you change, instead of just saying recommendations, could you make it more specific and say recommendation regarding use of X phthalate in toys and child care articles? Because then it's clear what you're making a recommendation on. That would help. Rather than this, because recommendation can mean public health, um, child's toys, everything. But if, if you say basically a recommendation regarding the use of X in toys and child care articles. Recommendation to CPSC regarding. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So it would be very specific what that recommendation is in regards to. Yeah. Right, but it's not written there, so it, it could be misconstrued. Yeah. But where are we saying the broader statements? You say we could say it somewhere else. Where else are we saying it? X. If what was written, Mike, if uh, what we, Mike wrote in red in six covers. See, I think what he wrote in six is fine, but it's it's pretty much saying other people need to do this. I mean, we've already gotten to the point where we're looking at exposure. We're looking at, you know, in this case, the DEP may not be the right place to have this argument. But, yeah. but you know, there are some cases when it's clearer. Um, I hate to just kick it down the road. That's all I'm saying. I think it's just a matter of where in the document to put that. Do you put it here or do you put it separately? Do you want a, a separate section for CPSC or even a summary of the CPSC recommendations to highlight it? Or do you want to to go by chemical. Like this is a section though that's it's going to be very simple to put it all together. Um, We can go on. I, I just, um, Mike, is this approach? If we were to complete this and have some verbiage here that explains why we are making these recommendations. Is that going to be useful to CPSC in terms of what they have asked us to do and what they then have to do with our report? Yeah, well, there's, um, let's see. For, as far as what CP, well, the bottom line is you're recommending on uh, about the use of things in toys and child care products. So it's going to, the meat of this is, I think when we get to a little bit farther down the list, but I think in terms of what CPSC needs is they need to know if what the recommendation is, but more importantly, why. So for example, if it's a, a balance of a little bit of exposure from toys and a lot of exposure from other things, whatever you recommend, mm -hmm. um, I think that has to be clear what that, what the risks are, you know, uh, something like a hazard index, uh, what the, 
uh, sources are if it's coming from uh, sources other than toys and child care articles. So I think that has to be in there for for CPSC. Yeah. And I had up a minute ago. I had the the language from the the guidance from our general counsel about you know would it be necessary. I guess the commission will have to say, is it necessary or it, whether it's necessary for public health to do this ban? And I think that was the word, or necessarily necessary to protect the health of children specifically. Yeah, which speaks to our point six. And then, but of course, we have the bullets. Uh, are the phthalates we have studied? either individually or in combination capable of producing uh, injury or illness to children and then of course the the exposure risk part is it mm -hmm. can that happen I mean yes if you mix these things together in the right doses it can cause injury or it's likely to uh, but then the second part is this going to happen from reasonably foreseeable handling and use or in other words is the hazard index going to be greater than one or something like that for actual products neither one of those mentions toys um yes but the bottom line for the commission is whether to regulate these uh, things in toys and child care articles. Mm -hmm. um, that's not. Uh, yeah. That's. So our still our form our format will give you the information if we are specific enough in points five and six we should be able to answer these bullets. But there, if you read on further, there it says in the last paragraph. To be restricted from use in children's products. Yeah, because they present an unreasonable risk of injury to children, and if so, at what level and why. Well, there you go. <clears throat> but it also addresses Chris's point, bullets up above, where they are not limiting it to children's toys right and and I mean that's I think it's not very clear from the CPS you're going to do both mm -hmm. what you uh, give more emphasis to it doesn't say I mean that leaves it to the chap um, but one I mean just as just one su suggestion said well what if you know this is the exposure in your below a hazard index of one from everything else in a cons in the consumer products the toys tip it over um, you know if that's true presumably that could be a justification mm -hmm. yeah, I think when we have discussions on some of the other phthalates this this yeah. is gonna be yeah I mean this diethyl is not the best example yes I mean, it has to be said that everything has been, let me say, quite ambiguously drafted, uh, you know, starting from, from the charge coming Absolute. down from, from Congress to everything. So that means, uh, so during the years we've worked together here on this, that has meant that we have to define it a little finer ourselves. Yeah. And uh, along those lines, I would say, we should phrase these recommendations in relation to articles under CPSC's remit, but uh, I agree, I fundamentally agree with Chris that we can also make some statements in the direction of other competent authorities. Absolutely. Um, yeah. The advantage of ambiguity is that yeah. you get to decide what it means. Maybe someone extremely clever did this. Mm. I, well, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Should we take a break? I think we shall break for today and convene again tomorrow at 9 a.m.
Thank you all. Yes, thank you. See you tomorrow morning.